Hi, Ken Ayashi here. I want to tell you a story. Uh, I actually haven't told this story forever, so you guys are privileged to hear this story for the very first time. So a long time ago, um, there was a woman uh, named Joanna. So Joanna actually uh, wrote a story about my life, um, as uh, my high school life, which was which was an honor. She actually wrote a whole book series on it, which was great. Um, uh, and uh, eventually, there was a there was a couple of movies too, which which are okay. But uh, the book series was it was it was nice to have um, someone write a story about my life when I was in high school. So uh, first time ever, it's been 25 years. I I have this is my life that uh, was a long time ago, and I'm breaking my silence. And I'm just finally sharing that you know I'm I'm the one that she wrote the book about. So. Anyways, uh, Joanna wrote this book uh, about about me, right? Uh, when I was a kid, I actually uh, my parents were actually w uh, wizards. Um, they they <laughs> they had magical powers, which was kind of it was a trip uh, to find out. My father uh, was this amazing wizard. Uh, he actually did this 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 thing where he fool, uh, fooled the entire United States um, with this illusion. And then my mom, also a very powerful wizard, she actually, unfortunately, she passed away at a very young age. So I had actually discovered that I was, uh, I had these, these, these things, that I wasn't normal, right? So I figured out, hey, you know what, I'm a wizard. In fact, uh, I, along the way, I meet this guy, kind of a protector guy right here, his name's Robert. Um, he actually, very big guy, I was a skinny young kid, that's me and him right there, but skinny young kid, and he actually was, told, you know, like he actually helped me along the journey along the entire way uh, while I went to this school, okay? Uh, I found out about this, this school that is actually, there's only one school in the entire world that's credited, recognized, that is a real school of wizardry and magic. Um, it's famous. It's actually... Uh, held inside of a castle uh, in Los Angeles, California. And it's a private castle, meaning it's, it is not open to the public. Meaning, I don't care how much of a fan you are of magic or anything like that, you can go to Las Vegas, pay for tickets and watch a show. Not a problem. You can go to Universal Studios, pay for tickets and go see something, a show, right? But this private castle inside of Hollywood, California, it, usually only celebrities could go there and, and even with celebrities they have to have a member let them in and uh, not only that you have to be in, uh, it's very expensive number one and then you gotta go through a secret entrance in order to get to this castle it's a very private club uh, on t so they actually not very many people know this there's actually a school inside of that inside of this castle um, and it's a school of wizardry for these young gifted kids and I I applied. I actually applied a couple times. I, I, it's a very difficult program to get in, involved with, so you know, eventually I, I got in. Uh, they only have two auditions a year. You have to be recommended. Uh, you have to showcase your, your work in front of all the faculty uh, and the students, and then you get accepted in. I applied three times, if you can imagine. So eventually I, I get into the school. And when I get to the school, um, uh, along, along the way, I meet some uh, two kind of people that helped me along the way, and we end up following the journey throughout the, the rest of the year. So I got in like when I was in sophomore. Uh, but I've been practicing and, uh, magic and wizardry for like a couple of years prior to that. And even that, I, I barely got in. So I, when, I, when I go to school, one thing that um, one of the guys that uh, befriends, I, I, I friend him, and we, we just, we, we click. Uh, unfortunately, he was like the butt of all the jokes, which was sad. I mean, he actually applied to the same academy. It's called the Academy of Magical Arts Junior Program. Very difficult program. Look it up on Google. Um, if you are a wizard or a magician, apply. See how difficult it is to get in that school. Okay, they don't take any, just anybody. Um, so there's only one school in the world that's world famous. There's a documentary on that school. Uh, my, my buddy here, uh, unfortunately, he applied six times. He never got in. But he was along with me along the journey. You know, very good magician. And the other guy, uh, uh, as I was going through the journey, I'm sorry about that, but the other that, that was my, my friend, um, 
Solomon. And the other guy, uh, person that was helping me along the way as well, was this this fantastic uh, uh, magician, a wizard, in fact, uh, with this crazy hair uh, at the time when I met her. And uh, she helped me, and she stayed with me along the entire journey. And if it wasn't with her, me and her together, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish and be able to get to the level that we got to without her. Um, and she, she was with me along the entire way. Um, if you could just imagine, you know, she with this crazy hair. So, uh, so one of the things that I, I was able to do at a very young, early age was uh, they showcase actually the best of the best kids that uh, the student body of this school. It's only like four, uh, 50 kids. And once a year, they'll select the top eight of them to be able to present their art a magic in front of a live paying audience. Usually celebrities are involved. You know, they obviously paid a lot of money to go to this cast, uh, to the castle to have an evening of ma dining and drinks and magic for the evening. There's a close-up room, a, a parlor room, and finally there's a stage, you know, where you perform on stage. So one of the tricks that I was extremely famous for <laughs> That was well reviewed. I performed this not only at the Magic Castle, but I also performed this uh, throughout the at the Comedy Store in Hollywood, and throughout a lot of clubs throughout LA. It was very famous for this. You know, huge audience. Well, audiences of 800. This Magic Castle has an audience of 200 people. So that was that was an amazing experience to be able to perform that in front of a live live audience. You, you know. Uh, but, uh, th th you know, that, that, that was an experience that I got to do at a very young age. I think I was 16 at the time. Uh, and then, uh, with the faculty, uh, an amazing faculty, by the way, they, they taught me uh, the art and just really honed my skills. I'll talk about that in, on the other videos. Uh, a, a, a wonderful director, Diane Zimmerman, a great wizard. Uh, Robert Dorian and a bunch of other people as well, the headmaster, was teaching me all this stuff uh, and just really honing my skills. Eventually, what uh, happened is they, the following year, I had uh, performed this or, along I'm with um, Denise uh, Winshefel. Uh, Denise, which is, this is, this is the headmaster, by the way, Robert anyway, Dorian, phenomenal wizard himself. But I had eventually uh, did this routine with, uh, with Denise. Crazy hair. Uh, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but uh, if you watch the other videos, you'll see what I ended up doing was I had performed this famous act uh, by a very powerful wizard magician, Harry Houdini, uh, and an escape artist as well. Um, I had done this act, and well, it was it was great. It was huge. So eventually, what happened is I become the most powerful magician, wizard, not only at that school, but in the world. And I had been able to beat out uh, the best of the best, the most famous magicians, wizards out there in the world, including David Copperfield, Siegfried and Roy, Pendragons, Lance Burton. They were the most famous wi wizards in the world. And the reason I, I know I beat them out was because the sheer size of eventually the performances that I ended up doing, which you'll see in my next video, so go ahead and subscribe. And then comment down below of what you think, because eventually I end up uh, doing my wizardry or magic in, at the Emmy Awards. And that's why I became the most powerful wizard in the world, meaning that I'm sure David Copperfield would have loved to have done the Emmy Awards too. I, I don't know. Um, in fact, let's just take a look. Uh, and I'm not kidding around. I, I, if you go to YouTube, we'll just type in um, 
and I don't know, we'll type in Takeshi. Okay, along with other performances that included performances uh, with illusions that required 180 performers in order to to uh, pull off the act, if you think about it. So if you think about David Copperfield and how amazing of a magician and a wizard he is, or Lance Byrne, or any magician to this day, um, David Copperfield, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Chris Angel, David Blaine, and those, those people, they don't compare to what I had to accomplish when I was uh, mere 17 years old. I had uh, performed at the Emmy Awards right here. You can see me. Welcome to the 44th Annual Prime Time Creative Arts Emmy Awards. So that that was like something that I had just presented, um, that because the the Academy of Mag uh, Academy of Television Arts and Sciences asked me to present the host of uh, not only that Emmy Awards but another Emmy Awards show as well. So I was honored that um, oh, Joanna Rawlings uh, ha Rawlings sorry had actually wrote a, a, the story about my life. Uh, of course, she dramatized it, you know, put in some other colorful characters and stuff like that. And even, you know, my twi the, the twins that were in, in the, uh, the movie, you know, you got these two girls right here. I, I didn't have guy f twins, but, you know, I had these two, you know, th these girls right here. They, they, they accompanied me along the journey as well um, as, as the, uh, uh, the, the uh, twins right here, as we can see. And then finally, I remember there was this one kid that just hated me. He just hated me. Uh, he would crank call my house. That's how much he hated me. Talk about a total, you know, a guy with a serious problem. He's still a magician to this day. His name's Cyril Takayama. And, um, and uh, we would perform at the Magic Castle. And of course, you know, he'd do his beautiful little dove act. And he was a fan, you know, very talented magician for sure. But he would do his double act and stuff like that, but uh, he totally hated me. And I could, I, I could understand why, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm finished the act, I closed the show, and then I'm doing the Emmy Awards. I had performances with 180 performers uh, with an illusion that has not been beaten to this day uh, of the sheer size. I mean, we're talking about Copperfield, we're talking about David Blaine, uh, 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 Chris Angel, any of them today, and I'll challenge you that I, I have the sheer size. How many assistants do they have on their performances? Two, three, five, maybe ten. Well, I had 180. So just in that itself, you know, or I, I don't know if you can agree, I became the most powerful wizard in the world. And then, just like the end of the movie, I just moved on. To, to, to another life. I, I, I continued on and I just lived a normal life. I, I'm, I'm a father for, I, I, I stopped talking about it. I just completely stopped doing magic entirely. So I just wanted to uh, just break my silence right now, tell you the story. I'm going to continue to tell you the story. If you want to hear more, go ahead and put your comments down below of what you think. Am I lying? I don't know. Maybe uh, Joanna wrote a story about some other kid in the 1990s that became the most powerful wizard in the world. Finally, um, I ended up going to a school um, after I graduated. Uh, actually, I was, still going, I was still attending the Academy of Magical Arts. But afterwards, I ended up going to uh, Oxford University uh, for a study abroad uh, program uh, as a transfer student. Excellent program. Got to live with the with the British family. 
uh, in England, in, uh, in Oxford, and got to attend Oxford, uh, which happens to be where I think the movie is filmed, isn't it? Something like that. So share the video with any other people that are fans of the movie you know what I'm talking about. What movie am I talking about? Put that answer down below and share the video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right, thank you very much for watching. If you want to check out any of the videos that I talked about on here, click on the one on the left. That's me performing at the Magic Castle back in 1991. And over to the right is at the LA Sports Arena at, uh, featured on ESPN. Remember to subscribe to get more details of the story. Comment if you believe me or not, like or not, whichever the case. Go ahead and click one of those and then share the video with another serious movie or book fan. Talk to you soon. Bye.